in the parking lot is 6,780 square feet of proposed outside storage. Uh, it will be surrounded by a two-foot knee wall and wrought iron fencing to a total of seven feet tall. The outside storage in the rear of the center is proposed at 4,628 square feet, again with um, brick, matching brick pilasters and wrought iron fencing. Um, the center um, has had a bit of a challenge financially with the potential of losing the Bashless store, as we've heard throughout the community. Uh, Mace Rich was very aggressive in going and finding a potential tenant to replace this Bashless. Um, and even with the timing, should council approve this on the 9th, we expect about a six to eight month gap uh, when the store would be vacant while the Cal Ranch store would do its potential tenant improvements. Sherry, may I stop you there? Do you mind if a question's asked? Joe, Joe just asked me. All right, Joe, go ahead. Before we go on, I've heard a variety of issues regarding the bashes, and I just wanted to, I guess for the record, kind of clarif clarify that up. I know bashes was in Chapter 11, is my understanding. Is that? I think what Joe's looking for is that. Uh, the choice of bashes that. to leave is bashes' choice. It, sure. That's so what I'm, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm looking for. I'm Rob Bassett with Mace Ridge. Um, okay. And this is Ed Bull. Um, so. Bash has actually filed chapter, well, I don't know which chapter it was, but bankruptcy and, and um, actually through the bankruptcy rejected our original lease. And so they closed for a little while back in 2008. And we actually worked with them to keep the store open. Uh, and so it's always, we, we started that with the hopes that they would recover, that the store would grow as more housing came online, that they would eventually make a go of it. So we've tracked their sales and worked hand in hand with them over the last five years and the store has improved but not to the level where they're going to be able to um, keep the store open especially in the face of increased competition that's coming in. So in a nutshell it's they're not financially viable that's the reason why Bash is at this location. Okay I want to get that because I'm hearing all kinds of things out there uh, and one of them was that we were asking bashes to go, and I'm saying I have no idea where that came from, but I knew they had some issues with Chapter 11, and uh, the reason why, th it's my understanding, the reason why they were moving on was just not financially viable. So, uh, you're going to have an empty store there anyway, regardless of what happens here. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Council member. I just want to make sure I got that out before you went in and started talking about this one specifically. Get that issue with bashes, and I don't know if anybody else has any other issue, but yeah, that's what I wanted to get on the record. Bill, this bill is this, yeah. Okay. Yeah, to piggyback on that with a part two, and then I've got a, a separate question. Um, it is also my understanding this is zoned retail. So whatever retail Maestrich decides to put in there is we have zero say over. Councilmember, that is correct. <clears throat> the uh, existing PAD in the center allows for retail sales as exists within the Cal Ranch or other retailers that are there in the center. And the Cal Ranch is proposed is very similar to other compatible retail so sales that exist in the center and on adjacent parcels uh, in the intersection as well. Okay. Um, and I think that was the other uh, mis yes. misinformation or, or unknown out there was, was uh, it was it can it can only be filled with a grocery store and that you know that where they were asked to leave but now my my other real question uh can you can you pull that one out is that the one that you zoomed in joe can, is this question Did you, is before no it was on this okay before we change pictures I, good all right i think it was either this picture or the picture before yeah can you pull out that one is there a particular reason that that row of stalls was chosen for the out for the outdoor you mean as opposed to as opposed to one that is say two over two down toward the bottom of the picture uh well yes it, they wanted to have they wanted it initially closer to the street and to have a much larger area we've negotiated with them to you know, we didn't want to compromise any of the driveways that exist or the circulation. So we narrowed it up. We kept it right uh, kind of in the center. Uh, we don't want it too too much closer to the Shops A building because we're worried that it'll be a, a visual impediment, to which is the shop building just to the south. 
uh, mm. just off the, the picture here. We don't want to um, interfere with their visibility in their, to their sign bands. So this seemed to be the, le the least um, obtrusive to, to them. It's also somewhat screened by, um, by the bank, or ch uh, sorry, Chase branch mm -hmm. out towards the street. Yeah, don't don't we have somewhere in the presentation an angle that shows that? Isn't there a? Uh, we do, that, Mayor. Okay, yes. so yeah. uh, we'll have that pop back I, I up. And, and you ask a question about mm -hmm. yeah. the choice. But again, that will help you when we get down to that. Yes, Sherry. Yeah, I want to follow up a little bit on the grocery store because that's been one of the issues that we've been hearing a lot. It's my understanding this building is on the small side, I guess, for a, a grocery store, so attracting an a, you know, a fries or something, but and we've got, we lost a fries because we had a superstore so close. But my understanding, this isn't really prime for another grocery store anymore. Grocery store was our first uh, and highest choice. You know, we wanted we went out to everybody. I mean, everybody, and they're either located uh, already into the market with a, a location they're happy with. Um, some don't view it as a good grocery store location. Um, and, you know, for us to retrofit it from grocery building to another use is expensive. And, you know, it's a beautiful grocery store. We hated to see it change use. We like the daily trips that it brings to the center. Uh, so, it, you know, that was our first choice, and we did everything we could to keep a grocery in the, in the spot. I'd like to interject here. So could you just tell the audience about AJ's or Trader Joe's? Give them an idea because we get this all the time about, you know, why don't you have this? And so they, they sort of put it on it. Why can't you do this, council? Why can't your economic development do this? We don't under, we don't under. AJ's is owned by Bashes too. Yes, yeah. But, yeah. but they, I don't know if people know that, they just put those two names out. So could you just kind of address that, the, the so difficulty of acquiring Yeah, AJ's is, is owned by, by Bashes. Um, we've, Sprouts is pretty well located. We've talked to them. Um, Whole Foods, is, it's, this is not an option for them. Um, who am I missing here? The Trader Joe's, we are talking to them in another location in the valley, and that's the only location that they want to talk about in the entire valley. Okay. Hmm. So. Jerry? So, Mayor, I think uh, your point is very well taken in that, um, and, and Rob can speak to this as well, certainly, and certainly our retail study that we recently conducted with the retail coach confirmed this, and that is that, um, A, retailers are interested in co-tenancy. So certain retailers and grocers included will only go in a center with other retailers that they are seeing their most success with. Uh, and the second piece is the per square foot sales of the center. So the history of a center, and in particular a retail space within the center, will be enough to scare off retailers. And that's what we've heard a bit about that particular Bash's location, is that because its sales were not particularly productive, that they as well weren't interested in being part of the center. So that's why um, the Cal Ranch use there, it does seem to be that just brings another use in that is more attractive to those other businesses that might want to come into that center. All right, why don't you go ahead on. We thank you for the little interruption, but you can go on with your presentation. Right, so uh, I think it's important also to note, council members, that the intersection itself is having pretty good success at this time. So uh, the timing to get another retailer in there, actually, even though we'll have a gap, uh, potentially, um, is pretty significant. So um, on the northwest, inter or rather southwest intersection of this corner is the WM Grace development, which doesn't exist today. Um, Winco <coughs> Grocery has submitted to engineering to today, um, and they have 85,000 square feet of a mega store that they're proposing on that, on the, a grocery that they're proposing on that center. Uh, and so that's a big deal, and it would also create more competition for what had been a pretty uh, slim retail grocery dollar in the center. Uh, on, the f on the other corner, on the southeast corner, um, they are 98% leased in the Evergreen Center, which has the Sports Chalet and recently opened the Texas Roadhouse and will have the Cons Home Center. So um, in addition, uh, Mace Rich in their own center, in the Australia Falls Market Center, just announced the Oregano's project. So um, the leasing is going fairly well at this time, and um, we're, we're thinking that it's a good time to, to get in the market while we can. Mm -hmm. Very good. Would you like to tell people quickly what Oregano's is for the people that are new 
Valley and sure. would not know that. So Oregano's brands themselves is kind of a Italian American cafe. Um, it's a wonderful um, local uh, restaurateur who actually uh, now is in, I believe, at least 10 states that I'm aware of, but started here in Phoenix. Uh, and they tend to go into um, really kind of funky, unique little uh, reuse space. And um, Mace Rich had good success in talking them into a new build. And so I don't know if you want to talk, Rob, about that project, but it's very exciting. Yes, I mean, they typically do go into repurposed or reused or buildings for the character uh, and charm of it. So this was a bit of a stretch to get them to go in. I mean, there's not much that's not new in Goodyear. So it was a bit of an, a stretch to get them to go into a ground up um, building. We're going to build it with in their typical theme for the exterior. And they're going to take uh, and build out the interior. We'll have our first kickoff design meeting tomorrow. So that's great. Uh, we think it'll be open uh, next fall. Well, for the public who might want to be listening to this, is that uh, we've tried twice when we're in Scottsdale to get in there, and it's always lined up and hard to get into. So um, I hope they have a, uh, an opening, uh, not just a soft opening, but an opening, so maybe I can actually taste what the food <laughs> <laughs> tastes like in that restaurant. Duly noted. <laughs> it would it'd be nice. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Jerry, go ahead. So um, I think another component that we wanted to talk about with the Cal Ranch stores is certainly their community partnerships. So one thing that we've learned, they have uh, stores in, in four different states, 30 here uh, in the southwest that they have opened today. And um, they work significantly with the local education partners and with the 4-H and the FFA to do uh, work in the community, um, you know, when they have the livestock ranch and the different judging activities and so forth. So um, they've demonstrated themselves to be a good partner. Um, other pieces of, of the project that I think are interesting and, and might be relevant to the conversation, the outdoor um, sales on the site, of course, are permitted through the PAD. So really, we're talking about the outside storage. And we talked earlier about the hours of operation. So from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., they would be permitted to have things in those two areas that we've discussed, uh, and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays. It's really those after hours where where things don't get moved back inside the store that is, is up for discussion at this stage. And the important piece of that is that they do have items such as corrals and, and troughs and things that need to be stored outside and loaded into things to be moved then off-site. And so um, that will allow them to have a gate that's open, much like a garden center, during the operational hours to sell those items and move them in and out of that, that storage area. Um, with that, we do have a, a formal staff presentation, much like you would hear at the hearing next Monday. We can do that, or we can just allow the applicant to go through what they'd like to present as well. So, um, I think they should present the presentation, <coughs> don't you? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Presentation, or yeah. Do you want staff to go through that? I'm asking the council. Uh, Mayor, if, if I may, I, I don't have a whole lot to add oh. to, to what Sherry just explained. Oh, okay. Other than it was reviewed by staff and we found it to be in compliance with the use permit standards uh, for the particular use that's proposed. And the Planning and Zoning Commission re reviewed it at the October 16th meeting and recommended for approval with the uh, with six uh, additional six stipulations. Uh, staff has uh, recommended one additional stipulation that the outside storage area in the parking lot be removed from the site if the use is ever discontinued or abandoned. Okay. Hmm. But other than that, I, th I think it would probably benefit more from hearing from the applicant. All right. Sure. Mayor and Council, Ed Bull, 702 East Osborne, representing Mace Ridge. I think you'll probably want us to run through some of these slides quickly, and I ask that you stop us if you want us to, to dwell on any okay. particular slide. I can see which one's <laughs> Okay. The other right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, we all know the site that we're talking about. Uh, I'm going to run through some of this quickly because you know from the staff report or Sherry's presentation tonight, uh, some information about Cal Ranch being a general merchandise store, uh, a ranch and home store, and much more. 
I don't know if you've had the opportunity to be in a Cal Ranch store. I have. I bought stuff there. I find that, you know, I bought some equestrian tack there recently and some other kinds of things. Uh, wide variety. I think uh, Sherry's description of being some kind of a hybrid between an Ace Hardware and a Cabello's is, is, is a good description. Um, there's a, a wide variety of things there for not only people who may be involved in some kind of equestrian or ranching or ranchette kinds of interests, but for anybody who wants to go buy some clothes and so on and so forth, and that uh, a, a good part of their of their floor space is clothes and shoes and those kinds of things. I've been around a long time. Um, this is really a recap of many of the things that Sherry already touched on, including uh, about a third of the store is dedicated to footwear and apparel. Uh, I'll run quickly through some of these photos. Obviously, this is a, a different store in a different location, but interior-wise, you'll see a wide variety of, of goods, uh, kind of one-stop shopping for many of us on some of the things that, that we'd be interested in. With respect to the site plan, with North being up, as was already touched on, uh, there's now uh, been a concession to limit this to two outdoor areas. Uh, the staff report coming into tonight talked about three. As Sherry mentioned, the one right along the storefront has been eliminated. As Sherry talked about, or as Rob, one of the other, talked about, the front area uh, is very well screened, at least from my perspective, due to the pad streetscape landscaping along both streets, uh, parking lot landscaping that occurs between uh, Estrella Parkway and the outdoor area, then the outdoor area, of course, itself, as we'll get into in a little more detail, is a combination of masonry and wrought iron, and the wrought iron components will have mesh screening on the inside of them as well. So screening is very much a part of what's going on. That's true on the back area as well, but we have some more exhibits that detail that in a moment. In addition to the front area being screened simply by its it, the distances involved from both Estrella Parkway and, uh, I'm sorry, Pebble Creek Parkway and Monta Vista Drive, uh, but the pad that's out there, the shops building that's out there, the on-site landscaping, there's also a pretty significant grade differential mm -hmm. between the grade of uh, Pebble Creek Parkway and what would be the finish grade of the parking lot in the location where this front area is depressed considerably, which which drops it down um, pretty remarkably. Um, uh, in, question, excuse me, uh, Wally. Um, thank you for mentioning the grade. I did drive out there and parked in the middle about where they're proposing to put their storage and I'm only five feet tall but I got out of my car and stood and then looked up to see if I could see Pebble Creek Parkway and occasionally I could see a car whipping by at 50 mile an hour right. but there, it's so screened and you're really in a bowl you're not at street level so you said it much better than I did, <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's what it I was... Really, if I was surprised. I mean, I didn't realize it had such a, a, a difference in the elevation, but it really is. When you drive off of Monta Vista into that parking lot, you're going down right. into like a little bowl, and so you're, you're, you're really kind of hidden, and the bank certainly hides it. Right. Yep. Um, these details were already touched on by Sherry and, and Rob. Uh, including this center, even after we remove some parking spaces, is overparked as compared to your code by approximately 595 spaces. Uh, at this center, a lack of parking has been the least of our problems. <laughs> so um, now we're switching over to what I will call the the the, the backside or the or the rear area, the east side of what's really shop, say, the south side of, of what will be the, Cal, uh, the uh, Cal Ranch store space in this kind of notched out area where the l shape storage area out there um, is proposed. Obviously, nobody is going to be able to see this from Pebble Creek Parkway because it's hidden behind shop, say. 
Uh, for the most part, as we get into some more slides, it's going to be very difficult to see it from the north or see it from the south or see it from Bullard Wash Park because that too is significantly depressed, plus there's significant landscaping that occurs on the interface. These slides kind of build on themselves uh, as far as being screened uh, and Candidly, there could very well be, under some tenancies, other kinds of things that got stored in this notch-out area between these two majors and shops A that would not have a fence and mesh fencing around it, and that's just part of what happens back a house and some retail spaces. But here, as you know, we're proposing, <coughs> we're proposing that the screening be there. I don't know how I jumped all the way to that one, but... Um, in any event, we will get to some line of sight drawings from Monta Vista and cut through Bullard Wash as well. Yeah, with, again, labeling this 30 feet, and then as we look at it on the aerial, you'll see the 30-foot landscape corridor that occurs along the, whether you call it the east side of the shopping center or the west side of Bullard Wash Park, it is a significant landscape corridor that occurs at grade or essentially at grade before you go dramatically down into the wash itself. Um, as we continue to move on through here, uh, again, being screened by buildings, being screened by the landscape buffer, being screened by distances, if we look at this slide, drawn from the perspective of someone at roughly the the bridge on on Monta Vista over Bullard Wash. The dashed line is representative of a line that if you were standing there or driving by in that location on Monta Vista, you could not see this storage facility because it's screened by the screening that's provided in conjunction with the loading dock that's a part of what will be the Cal Ranch store. It's the loading dock that exists today for bashes. That wall, as you know, is a substantial wall. It will be screening views into this area. The solid line is intended to show if somebody were really looking for it, they could see from that location across Bullard Wash and Bullard Wash Park, and theoretically through the landscape buffer provided along there, and they would see just the little north, just the little piece uh, of that L-shaped storage area, which is identified here as being approximately 43 feet wide. Um, in other words, if you're thinking of that as an L-shaped outdoor area, it's the east end of the L that <coughs> at least theoretically, if all the landscaping were cut down both along Monta Vista and along the park, and you were really focused, uh, and you were looking 500 feet away, you could see, theoretically, a 43-foot end of that area. Uh, I can't opine on whether that will or won't happen, but I personally, driving down Monta Vista on somewhat of a curve going over a bridge wouldn't be looking 500 feet through multiple rows of landscaping to um, see what I could see 500 feet away. But others might. Um, be that as it may, this too is intended to show that photographic perspective where that little red arrow that's mm -hmm. over there on the left-hand side yeah. is intended to show the very end of that L-shaped <laughs> area that we were talking about. Those trees obviously will continue to mature, uh, so the screening will, even if we weren't screening around the facility itself, continue to enhance over time. Uh, front sales area we've already talked about and we can talk more about as you want with respect to its location and landscape islands and streetscape landscaping and being down on a bowl and pads separating it from streets and so on. Um, as we talk about the screening around the facility, as Sherry touched on, uh, we're envisioning a seven-foot-tall screening that's around it that uses um, uh, masonry pilasters and then wrought iron in between. 
Uh, in addition, there's in the front facility, there's two foot of masonry on the parking lot level and the wrought iron above it. Uh, mesh fabric screen that's located on the inside. Uh, that screen really comes in two colors, black or tan. Uh, and either color is fine with Cal Ranch. We perceive, unless you disagree, that the tan color would be more compatible with the kind of earth tone cover colors that are used typically at, at the center. Um, that being the color palette at the center, this intending to show the two foot of masonry on the bottom with the pilasters and the wrought iron in between. This does not show the mesh screening. Um, we have it, this exhibit really doesn't show the mesh screening either. We have one here in a minute that does. But showing the pilasters, the taller wrought iron element here toward the left hand side is a gate and then the balance is the two foot of masonry with the, with the wrought iron over it for the seven foot presence around that front, um, front area. Uh, this is a elevation of the ex existing Bash's store with the same architectural forms and accents and colors and trims and all of those kinds of things. Simply superimposing the Cal Ranch sign over the front door. Uh, we're not changing the store. Maceridge is throwing, throwing is, is intending to ex invest. Can I say how much? Approximately $300,000 in various upgrades. Uh, painting, enhancing, uh, you know, retrofitting, doing the kinds of things uh, to maintain the quality of the store, but also to make it work and maintain its character in a, in a fresh new look and so on. Um, this we've talked about as far as dimensions. Um, as far as the rear sales area and some of this screening, would, same type of screening would occur on the front sales. Here, it's tended to show this mesh, although it doesn't look like mesh, it would be mesh. This rear area shows how back there, under those circumstances, over 500 feet away, landscaping and all this and that and the other, uh, certain applications like these happen to be horse corral fence panels, or it could be posts or other kinds of things uh, we would expect would be slightly above the fence height. But again, with distances and screening and location, and candidly, it being stored probably not as high as some things sometimes get stored behind major stores we wouldn't anticipate that that would be materially incompatible with any neighboring persons or properties. Um, that takes us back to the beginning where we're happy to fill in any gaps that you want, but underlying all of this without repeating much of what Sherry had to say, which I think was very complete, we really are dealing with some very narrow issues as to what is not already permitted by the existing PAD zoning under the use permit um, we believe at least and we can discuss more a week from now that Mace Region correspondingly Cal Ranch have done a lot of things through location and screening and other things to make sure that these facilities are properly placed properly screened where we're not only concerned with making sure that we're not materially detrimental to any neighboring persons or properties, but we're not materially detrimental to any of our existing tenants or otherwise as well. That too is very important to Mace Ridge and to Cal Ranch for that, for, for that matter. So we believe it's a good combination package that's coming to your council. We appreciate staff's recommendation. We appreciate the Planning Commission's recommendation. And if you have questions, if we have answers, we'll try to answer them. If we don't, we'll do our homework and answer them Thank you. next week. I see you over here. Bill, you had a question? Yeah, I do. Um, thanks for the presentation. Um, my, and I uh, agree wholeheartedly with the, the rear storage area, I think, is less of a concern um, perhaps than the front storage area. My concern in, in talking to... Uh, personally my concern and then also talking to some residents in that area is um, the storage area in the front and 
having driven over to the 35th Ave and Southern location, there is no front bullpen, if you will, storage area out in the its parking lot. Um, they had a few things right outside in front of the store. Um, and then their very large storage area in the back, which was unscreened uh, with chain, you know, like 10 foot or 12 foot chain link fence. So I'm thankful that we don't have, we haven't, we haven't seen that part of the presentation, but it was interesting that there is no storage area in the front of the store. And that yet at this, at this particular location, we're proposing it and then you're going to end up obviously building it and, and funding it. Is that, um, how big of a, of an issue for Cal Ranch is that front storage area? Big, I mean, there's several issues that kind of played into how we came out, up with this footprint, uh, the, the split footprint. I think they would much prefer, in fact, their first request was 20,000 square feet of outdoor storage area in the front. And we said, no, let's, let's see what we can fit in the back. And it, it really comes down to being able to access uh, trash receptacles, to being able to access the existing truck docks, to being able to access the rear of the shop's A building. By the time you deal with all those constraints, you're kind of left with the L that, we, that we've shown today. So that forced some additional display area and we work, you know, in total, we're much less than the 20,000 square feet that they initially want, uh, and wanted, but this is the bare minimum that we could get them down to in terms of total area. Okay. And, f and for it to be functional for them as well. So, yeah, so the, the two together kind of work in conjunction with one another. Okay, the, the second question that I have, if you don't mind, Mayor. No, you're, you have the microphone. Um, well, I always have the microphone. <laughs> the, um, is the choice of screening material, the, that fabric tends to break down pretty easily out here and really turns into an eyesore in and of itself. Um, and I realize that there's a, obviously an economy issue with going with wrought iron and a fabric uh, screen rather than all block, um, and, so, and there's some decorative issues with that. Um, is there? Do we have any anything in our existing code that requires the upkeep and maintenance of that? Is that another stipulation we can put in there? I mean. If we can screen it, because my next part of this is going to be, let's talk about the height of what we're storing in the front bullpen versus the picture that you just showed uh, and what, what's in the back. So um, tell me a little bit about the screening and what, what can we do from a staff perspective to make sure that it's maintained. It, it may actually be cheaper just to go straight with pure masonry, but we didn't want the height and the mass of the uh, of just a solid yeah, I think it seven foot tall wall the, for the entire I, expanse. I so, think a, a sure. seven foot solid wall would, would be able uh, to be. No, I, I, I agree. So, so this will be more visually appealing. I mean, the, the wrought iron will look great. Uh, the, the mesh was an accommodation. We'd rather not have the mesh. The tenant would rather not have the mesh so that you can actually see what they sell. Um, but, you know, they've made the accommodation to allow the screening. Um, <coughs> In terms of the upkeep, you know, we'll try to work on something in, in the lease document itself to make sure that they do that. And if it's in the STIP, I'm sure we can agree to something on that. In terms of the height of the wall in the front and the, and the things that are stored in there, one of the stipulations uh, that we are agreeing to in the front is to not store anything above that seven foot tall fence. In the rear, we would like some flexibility there to, to go above. Sure. And, I, and I, I think in the rear, it's reasonable at that point. So. Um, we're going to work on something for maintaining the screening. The height of the storage is not going to exceed the seven foot tall wall in the front of the building. Is that just so I've got that, that dialed in and I've already got the question answered about why and where it is. So thank you very much. Councilman, we can add something to the stipulations, although it basically is implied that if it's supposed to be screened, it's supposed to be maintained. They'd be out of compliance if the, if the screening failed to screen. So. Yeah, but what's implied? But we can, well, can we can modify like the stipulation, <laughs> and Ed, for that matter, that will work around that. But okay, Joe. First of all, I'm I'm in agreement with everything Bill had just mentioned as far as you know, not over the height, the screening. The question I have at the screening, and I was, and I don't see it in my packet here unless I miss it. Is some type of artist rendition of what that looks like. You know, I'm have a, I'm a kind of a visual person, and I, I see the wrought iron, I see the material. 
I, I can't quite my hand around what it's going to look like with the screening. You know, if I can get an artist rendition with the screening. I, I didn't see it. Did I miss it? It's, it's um, almost invisible. Don't, it's it's, uh, it's is. sort of... It's like not a that, I'm this, talking about this, for the front. This is isn't that, really yeah. right. Um, talking about the back? No. I why don't he's talking we, about the front. He's talking yeah, about the front. But that doesn't provide I don't think that really. Mesh. That doesn't really. Why don't we work on that before next week? Because these are kind of computerized <laughs> That would. I think that would be helpful. <laughs> and I think it would be helpful for anybody that's... Not just us. I think anybody that yeah. has, you know, some questions regarding it, I think it would be. And, yeah, and we may. Sometimes you if, used to bring the brick in to show us. Can you yeah. bring a little piece of the screening in? I think so. Uh, I, yeah. I know that's uh, and some. You know, I, I think you know what wrought iron looks like. Yeah, but yeah, I, I but think the, it just help. It'll help the audience. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it, it'll go a long way to that. And I'm trying. How does that screen adhere to that wrought iron? I mean, is it? It's wired. Is it woven inside? Or is it? I mean, I'm just curious on how that to keep it from. You know, doing one of these numbers with a win. Do you know? I don't know. I'll have to ask. I okay, mean, I'll just. I'm guessing grommets and and some sort of. It's all screwed in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. But I, but I really think if you, you could come up with the drawing, I I think it not only help me and I think it'll help others, you know, um, for the next council meeting to get a, get an understanding. Of it. But everything that Bill had mentioned as far as the height. The reasoning of why it's there all makes sense. You know, like uh, Councilman Campbell had mentioned, when you're on Pebble Creek, you're not going to see it. You're see in a bowl. Right. And to get back to your others for the back, if you're picking that up while you're driving on a highway, you're not keeping your eyes looking forward. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of be concerned with somebody who's seeing it, driving it, because you're not uh, to pick that little window up while you're driving is probably not a good thing. So, but I, I think those. That's the only thing I really want to add to what Bill had mentioned. But I'm I'm on base with him. On, on those pictures. And I agree. I think you've done a very nice job screening it. We have other stores, Lowe's, that do store things out front throughout the city. So um, I, I appreciate the extra efforts that they've gone to to screen it and that they're going to keep the larger items in back. And, and, and again, the back, seeing it from the highway or the, the parkway, I, you know, that's where the truck dock and there's the garbage. Um, dumpsters are back there so I, I mean they're already getting truck traffic back there so that doesn't concern me I think the screening back there is fine the front it's it's as long as it's kept up and everything I have absolutely no problem with it yes Molly well I just I, I've, I've had a hard time getting my arms around the concern about the storage in the front that they're gonna see it and the only time they're gonna see it is if they drive into the, the parking lot because you can't see it from Pebble Creek Parkway if you're in a car. Maybe walking you could, but I even stood at Chase Bank and looked down, and it was very difficult to see. And, and that's what I've been talking to a lot of folks about, is to let them understand that they're not going to see what's down there. Although we appreciate you uh, offering to close it in. We appreciate the height requirement. Uh, but they've got to be able to do business if they come into that site, and we understand that. And I'm born and raised in Texas. I have been shopping at ranching stores all my life. I buy my boots, my hats, my belts, my dog food. Uh, it's a wonderful store that is going to open up a whole new avenue for Goodyear, I believe. And if we can just uh, feel comfortable about the uh, storage out front. I mean, if you go and look at our Ace Hardware, uh, it is full of stuff, and it is not screened. So, um, you know, I appreciate them wanting to come to Goodyear, and uh, I want them to be successful, and, and I appreciate you uh, having a height limit on if we're going to store in the front. But like I say, if you, unless you drive in the parking lot, you're not going to see what's there. Well, I'll just add, I think they've gone to great extents to, uh, you know, try to address all of our concerns. Um, uh, again, I, I have to, I'm going to talk on assuming what the public's thinking is they're saying, what? Mm -hmm. A Western store in our town? We're not Western. Well, 
you know, this was the West before we all became transplanted in this area. And we have lots of farms around us. We have uh, over there by the white tanks, we've got uh, places to rent horses because I take my grandson there. So the surrounding area, and if you remember when we were talking about uh, getting a shopping center started it and they went out and did this uh, we went and did our study and we saw that our shopping radius far surpassed what you thought yours were and so the same thing I'm sure Cal Ranch has done a study on this they've already you think they're going to come in here without a marketing study that says hey we can tell you you'll get this many customers coming in here so you have to remember they're a big company they don't want to fail also but I think it's a little bit of uh, um, I, I don't want to use a word that'll that'll uh, uh, that'll be not tasteful to people, but we have to realize that even though our lifestyle is a certain way, and certain neighborhoods have a lifestyle, there are thousands of people around us that live a different lifestyle. Now, in a city of seventy thousand people, everybody has their lifestyle choices, and we have to stop being concerned that it doesn't fit within our picture of what our economic level is. There are all levels, and we need to be looking at this. I, I congratulate each one of you. I don't know what you're going to vote, but I congratulate you on your questions and your concerns, because that's what we, our concern is how the architectural look will be, and, um, but it could be a Lowe's. This is a power center, and so what I would like tonight, Sherry, is tell what a power center is because when we talk about some of these other stores they'll never come to this power center they're going to go into the shopping center and so just enlighten the public on that sure mayor so i think a few many of your points were were right on from the perspective that we did recently complete our retail study. In fact, I spoke with Aaron Farmer this afternoon who conducted the study for us about the potential of a Cal Ranch type store and their success and a few other anchors that we're working on for another project. And uh, he indicated to me that um, they, uh, the study itself demonstrated about $300 million in leakage in merchandise that was general merchandise and ranch and rancher related type activities. So they they have, uh, since our two parts to our study, have drilled down a bit to find out what is actually being sold by category, and they indicate a definite need. And again, it's important to realize um, the study was conducted with the intent of identifying the market area. So what is the potential for Goodyear as a regional shopping center uh, running from I-17 to the west all the way past the White Tanks, uh, Buckeye, all the way north to the lakes, and all the way south down to Maricopa nearly is our market area. Uh, over 790,000 population. So the potential for Goodyear to be that retail regional center uh, exists. The power center is that unique uh, animal that came about uh, in the early 90s uh, from a real estate perspective. So not unlike what's in Canyon Trail Center today with our super target and the potential for a Home Depot in that, that center as well. It's a nice mix of big box retailers. So everything from um, a Ross or a Marshalls, maybe 25, 30,000 square feet up to the Home Depot at over 110,000 square feet with the inline stores, again, that are much concerned about that co-tenancy. In the retail world, that means they're only going to locate adjacent to other retailers that have compatible types of merchandise and also compatible square foot sales. Uh, and so that's the mix and magic of, of what the retail industry does. So that power center uh, is the precursor to our regional mall and provides that foundation financially and, and long term for the community to have elements that don't really go in the regional mall component but fit in the community. And then my last word on this is that all the communities around us are walled in. So you drive along our streets and you see walls, okay? The community across the street, directly across the street, has uh, commercial uh, uh, centers. There, uh, there's lots of uh, pads there on across. I don't even how many across the street on Pebble Creek Parkway, on that other side, where, by the way, we have a tire business. The garage doors are open. I see them working on cars. I see tires. I, I mean, I see everyday practicality happening. So I, I, I don't understand this big, big fence they put, 
mental fence they've put on, if I may say, on this. And so what, just in lightness, what other uses on Pebble Creek Parkway could there be across from this power center? So I think that's a, a relevant point as well. The three corners, uh, the two corners today, so the eastern corners have activity on them. The southwestern corner will have the WinCo, the 85,000 square feet, but it will have an additional 150,000 square feet of development. Uh, and, and that could include everything from, again, more of the auto type use to the bank, um, to the retail clothier, to uh, we expect on one of these corners that we will eventually have a, a mall or a um, shall we say, a theater-supported mall <laughs> type activity going on. Additionally, it's important to note that on the Walgreens corner, so on the northwest corner, that isn't entirely built out. So as those four corners complete, we will have nearly 2 million square feet of retail in that power center. And again, about a mile and a half from the 10 and a mile and a half from the 303 when completed next spring. So um, that synergy of uses and retailers is what creates that draw for us as a retailer. Center. And bottom line, retailers come in to make a profit. And so their study says that to them. Um, and so, you know, I can, I can see that this is it's gonna, it's going to look fine in my view. But again, I'm not telling you what to do, just telling you to ask the right questions so you'll be satisfied. But I'm just, I'm talking like this for the public that might be listening because I think we will get some of the public in um, when they can speak and that will be on the, uh, the council night of next week. So uh, I, I'm all done. I, I just wanna, before I turn over to Jody, ask another question, I wanna thank, um, Cal Company and Mace Rich uh, for answering all of these questions and also making con some concessions, uh, which you did, um, and really big concessions. So uh, you have the right to be there, okay? So that, that's the first thing. You have the right. So I can't thank you enough for these concessions to satisfy um, the questions that were asked tonight. Joe? Just one uh, one comment, and again, I echo, I, I appreciate you coming in and, and going over it, I really do. Uh, when you mention about the screening, um, I tend to agree with the with the developer that uh, the tan's probably the one more aesthetic. I don't know if, if he got any winks from anybody else one way or the other on that, but I, I tend to agree with you. I think that will kind of blend in with the natural landscaping on there as opposed to the black. I tend to agree with you there. Bill? Okay, I wasn't going to say anything about it, but... It is in the middle of the parking lot, so maybe black is a better color. But my real question is, um, can you talk a little bit about Monta Vista and Pebble Creek Parkway? There's a vacant, there's vacant on the northwest and northeast corners, and I think the southeast corner, well, it's kind of straight across there, but you talk a little bit about that because I think that may help tie in this project into what's coming. Uh, excellent point, Councilmember Stipp. So those are both zoned uh, for multifamily, and so um, we could have quite a bit of density and height on those corners uh, adjacent to the mall. And then, of course, um, we have a commercial component right on the hard corner there um, with the multifamily behind on the east side. Um, additionally, we have the um, senior living project that's going on further south or north, rather, of that, of that division, which um, you know, has quite a few units and a bit of density, as we've talked about. So the the area between the housing right now on Virginia, I believe, mm -hmm. and Monte Vista, that little section right there is zoned for multifamily? Correct. A commercial corner and then multifamily as well. So anybody with a two-story living in that particular area who can see the shopping center today may be looking at apartment buildings or whatever multifamily decides to go in. That's correct. Okay. Good question, Bill. Any, anything else? Well, thank you very much for coming tonight, and uh, we'll see you next week, I guess. And uh, by then, you may have other questions you'll have to answer when the public comes before us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My glasses on. Can't see. You get five minutes. Yeah, there you go. Okay, you. yep. Yes, I heard your, your, uh, your desire. Uh, we're now going to adjourn this meeting and go into the regular meeting. And I think you want a 10 minute break, is that fine? Okay, I'm gonna adjourn this meeting and then in 10 minutes we'll call the other meeting.